I would like to give the floor to Heike now for the presentation. Heike, the floor is yours. Thank you, Thomas. Um, the study has been done by the sector project uh, uh, Sustainable Agriculture from GIZ and has been commissioned by our Federal Ministry of Economic Cooperation and Development. The first part of the study um, is comprises the losses in the cassava and maize value chains in Nigeria and will be presented by me. The second part of the study is the calculation of the ecological footprint and will be presented by Daniel uh, from PE International. Just some words on the background. I will be very short here because I think most of the participants are more or less familiar with the topic of food losses. We have a growing concern about food losses and about limited natural resources for food and non-food biomass production. We have rising food prices, rising land rent, land rents and overuse of natural resources. We have significance of losses and weights. According to FAO, it is about one third of the agricultural production globally. And this uh, causes an important environmental burden of food losses on, the, well, on natural resources. In this context, uh, BMZ, our federal ministry, uh, laid a political goal in its 10-point program for rural development and food security, which is to promote better post-harvest protection of agricultural crops. This uh, uh, slide is from FAO. I, I, I want, nearly want to skip it. It just shows that um, losses from production to retailing, which is a light blue part of the cologne, are much more a concern in so-called developing countries than the food waste, the so-called food waste, which is more or less on the consumer side and which is more a concern in Europe and North America. Um, the steps of the food supply chain, also according to FAO, is the agricultural production, the post-harvest handling and storage, processing, distribution, and consumption. This is a food supply chain. We had a look on the first uh, four steps of the supply chain, which we call losses, and we did not have a look on the waste which occurs during consumption. The data we collected uh, either through published sources, through key informants and focus group interviews, questionnaires and or surveys with major participants have been uh, done along the value chain and um, the questionnaire um, focused on cropping systems, on agricultural inputs, labor, harvesting techniques, peeling techniques, grading, storage, marketing, processing, and transport, and all the losses which could occur on the different steps. The number of respondents in each sample for those who are interested in the methodology. We uh, worked in two states, Ondo and Kaduna state, and in every state we looked into two local government areas, Isidora and Akura North in Ondo and Lere and Emma in Kaduna. In every local government area, we asked 50 maize farmers and 50 cassava farmers. We asked a different amount of gari processors, much less than the farmers, of course. Uh, we asked maize grain marketers fresh cassava tuba marketers. We asked feed millers for, for maize and cassava starch processor. Altogether, uh, 517 questionnaires and answers have been given and entered into the calculation of the losses. We're coming now uh, roughly to the, to the data we find out. This is the uh, losses along the value chain of cassava. Uh, we distinguished the farm level, the level of gari processor, the level of gari marketers, and starch factory. Um, we cannot sum up uh, the, the percentages which we found because um, we have different um, re references. Uh, we have 
uh, cassava, fresh cassava tubers, and we have gari. So uh, uh, there's no sense to uh, uh, to make a summation of all the percentages, and this would uh, give no no uh, valuable uh, uh, data. But it shows us where are the hot spots of the losses. At the farm, we had uh, approximately or, or um, yeah, approximately 8.5% of losses where the most part came from the harvest, from non-appropriate harvesting technologies. Uh, at the dairy processors uh, uh, um, level, we had 12.1% uh, of losses of fresh tuba, which is still quite high, and which came apart from transport, but which came mostly from uh, cassava tubers who have been too woody or who have been too small. Which is also uh, which shows that uh, there has been some problem at the harvesting. Maybe the harvesting has been too early, or the soil has been not appropriate. So these problems also come back to the farm level. We have a certain amount of loss of gari at the processor stage. Um, when we come to the gari market, there we have a. a, a quite uh, um, significant losses uh, in the storage caused by moisture or and caused by rodents. The transport is 2.5%. Transport always has been between 2 and 3% in, in the study. Uh, losses in the starch factory are quite high as well. And they have been composed uh, from losses during processing and losses during storage, about half, half approximately. If we come to the losses along the value chain of maize, we also find that the losses on the farm level are about, well, nine, about 9%, nine percent, um, as the most important part was, again, the harvest of the maize. It's, it's about 4%, uh, a little bit less than a half of the uh, uh, losses accruing on the farm come from inappropriate harvest technologies. Um, but if I don't want to go through, uh, through every uh, number now, you can see the shelling, the storage of the maize, dry maize cob, and the storage of the dry maize grain. And then we have transport, transport to the market from uh, dry maize grain and transport to the feed miller. When we come to the market, and there we really can uh, uh, identify a, a, a big hotspot, we see about 23% of losses which occur on rural markets, uh, maize markets in Nigeria, at least in those regions where we did the study. These losses co were composed from spillage, from rodents, weevils. Uh, weevils is uh, and tiamide. Uh, uh, to a lesser degree, uh, it has been moisture, uh, but it, it is evident and significant that the, uh, the level of the market in the maize value chain is a, a very um, fragile element in the, in, the, in the food value chain. Um, from the transport to the feed miller in the last line, you can see that there are also some losses at the feed millers. Stage uh, in storage, uh, also caused by spoilage, by rodents, and by weevils. And then the feed is transported um, to, um, it is transported, and there, uh, there's a loss of 3%. Again, this is always a loss between 2 and 3% uh, in transport. And the storage of feed, 4% uh, again. Um, are, um, are lost um, due to spillage and to weevils. So this is the pattern, the losses pattern, which we had in, uh, in both value chains. So we did a monetary estimation of the losses. Uh, we took the data and extrapolated them to uh, uh, the national Nigerian level with it market prices from, uh, from uh, a certain point, I think it was February 2013. And it just gives us an idea about the huge amount of, of 
myth authors, which are uh, lost by myth, which is about uh, 590 million of euro per year concerning maize, and uh, more than 600 or 644 million euro per year in cassava value chain, which are lost annually. The study uh, elaborated some options for food loss reduction. We have the point concerning appropriate technology. Cassava, this is mostly in the harvesting level. Uh, um, this, this concerns the soil, uh, that um, the tubers are um, taken out of the soil and, and they break. Uh, it is uh, during peeling with uh, wrong peeling materi material, uh, wrong knives. It is during storage that appropriate technology uh, uh, should, should help at milling. In maize, it is bagging, using uh, appropriate bagging to reduce spillage losses. It is transportation and its storage hygiene uh, um, um, in, res uh, in respect to um, rodents and to uh, weevil damage. Another point is the organization of farmers in the value chain. Uh, in those areas where we did uh, the study, the organization of farmers was very weak. There were very few and not well uh, structured farmer groups. They had no access to credit, which would be uh, quite an important uh, frame condition to um, convince uh, people to uh, store their products because they need the money after the harvest. Um, another uh, recommendation would uh, be to uh, create outgrower schemes with harvesting, collection, and transportation of fresh cassava tubers by the processors, or small-scale pre-processing centers locating, located among clusters of cassava farmers and or farming communities where a dewatering of cassava could already be done and then transport would be much cheaper and with uh, with uh, less losses. Uh, another recommendation is improved market infrastructure. Standards for handling and processing didn't exist at all. There were no standards for quality or standards how to do uh, uh, handling and processing. Um, in a, uh, what, what is important for uh, um, um, food loss reduction strategies is to do proper cost-benefit analysis uh, which we only did in at the um, surface in the study. We will do it uh, much more in detail in the next study to find out which investment uh, um, is um, economically uh, sustainable. And another um, recommendation was, of course, human capacity development uh, and technology transfer. So um, thank you. I will hand over now to uh, to Daniel to do the second part of the study. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Daniel, Daniel Thumann. I'm um, working for P International. Uh, we are a um, sustainable performance solutions provider, a consulting firm, um, providing our kind of um, like software or databases or consulting services. Um, also help in strategy consulting, and uh, we supported the GIZ uh, in this project um, to assess the ecological footprint of um, post-harvest losses in Nigeria. So um, it's of course not only a, a post-harvest losses do not only um, represent a an, an loss in economic values, but of course also like um, waste in in resources and in um, additional environmental burden on the uh, on the environment that ha could have been prevented. Um, just the, the the chapters that are gonna follow in the next ten minutes is like some words on data collection, then mainly the results, and then um, some conclusions and the, pers the perspective of the or um, yeah what can be followed by the results that uh, we've, we've presented. Um, um, Heike already um, mentioned the procedure of data collection. So um, 
our modeling built on the data that was already collected, um, like the, of course, the losses, the use of agricultural chemicals, um, the cropping system, transport distances, uh, transport, um, also the, for processing, um, energy use and water use. And um, whenever there was no data available, we either used data from our databases or uh, used literature data to supplement the, the missing data. Um, for the agricultural um, cultivation, uh, we use um, an agricultural model that we have built uh, in PE that allows to um, uh, allows a complete modeling of all field dimensions um, of all the uh, input materials and to consider like really the whole complex uh, system of an, of an agricultural cultivation. Um, the main indicators that we have assessed is the global warming potential, um, uh, water footprint and uh, land occupation. And you will see that in the in following results. Um, first, the results gonna, will be shown on product basis, that is per ton of final product, so that we can see where are the hotspots, where is, where is like most of the environmental burden created um, during the, the processing of the, of the products, different products. And then later we will see the environmental footprint of all the post-harvest losses combined together. So um, we start um, with the with the environmental impact on product basis. Here we this is kind of like the a, a very brief hotspot analysis. Um, the contribution of different um, phases of the of the supply chain to the final. Uh, carbon footprint, and we see that for both maize and gari, um, the agricultural phase is the most important, um, contributing to the absolute majority of the uh, final carbon footprint. Um, it, maize is the maize feed, which was the final product that we considered, is not very intense in processing. So here, the agricultural phase is even more important compared to gari, where where there is kind of an more intensive processing following the um, harvest so uh, but even there um, agriculture is the is the main contributor to the global warming potential um, we can see that in this in the following figures in more detail so this is the the final uh, carbon footprint of the uh, two final products and we see the contribution of different phases. Um, you see here in um, this violet color are the field emissions. That is um, mainly um, laughing gas and N2O that is emitted um, from, the, from the soil during growth of the plant. Um, you see here the contribution of the um, supply of fertilizer um, and then you you will also find here uh, field operations, and uh, we see here like all this um, how how um, significantly this contributes to the carbon footprint. Um, we have uh, benchmarked these uh, figures here against um, existing data sets, and we find that, um, for an example, maize cultivation or cassava cultivation. Is um, is very much in in range with existing data that we have. Um, a little bit worse because the yields that were um, reported in the surveys were quite low. Then the field emissions um, then were distributed only on a on a low lower share or lower amount of of final uh, product. Um, Next um, values I want to show you is for water deprivation. Um, two sentences um, to the term water deprivation. Um, water deprivation is not the water input, so it's not only the, it's not the water use, but it's rather the um, amount of water. It's a figure that that um, is 
um, con is reporting the amount of water that is not available for the environment anymore, that is not available for downstream uses anymore. Um, that means it is water that is um, leaving the watershed, mainly through evaporation. And then additionally, there is a weighting factor applied to this number of water evaporated um, uh, weighting factor according to the regional water availability. Uh, we call that a water stress index. Um, so this number is really the number, the, the amount of water that is missing, that is, has an environmental relevance. Um, the, um, you, yeah, we have to l later set these um, figures into perspective to get a better understanding of, um, of how much water this really is. Um, for the time being, we can see that here um, agricultural is agriculture is not contributing very much. This is because both of the um, crops uh, were reported to be rain fed, so we have no irrigation. So here it's mainly the, the upstream processing that is uh, contributing here. And these numbers also contain um, water used for energy provision for the uh, different uh, for the different processing steps um, he, now the contribution to land use um, this is here um, land occupation so the the area um, occupied to produce the products um, here there's no big surprise that here it's mainly the area used for the cultivation. Um, this figure is more interesting when we look at the combined uh, combined impact of all cost products together. This is a, maybe a good, good point to get over to the combined um, losses. Uh, we can go through these results quickly because actually it's now easy if we combine what I have told you so far with the presentation from Heike before. Um, you will find that now we have like this um, aggregate the, the the environmental impact on product scale multiplied with the losses. You will find that these are now the combined figure for all losses together. Um, so um, the impact here is the mixture between the quantity lost and the environmental intensity at that relevant processing uh, step. Um, so here we see if we lose a lot of gari at marketing phase, gari has already been processed quite a bit. So this um, this uh, phase is here contributing most to the combined losses, the same uh, to the environmental impact of all losses. Same uh, here for the marketing phase in the maze. Um, we will find similar patterns for water deprivation. Um, and uh, for the land use. And the, um, again, it's maybe a bit difficult to now have an idea of like, okay, we have 0 0.73 um, million hec of hectares per year occupied, but I'm gonna say some more words um, later to, to set this into perspective. Um, what we see here is like, we already get an idea of how large the amounts of water or land occupation are that we cause to to due to food losses, um, and also uh, yeah we see the the um, significance of different processing phases. So to come to the conclusions, um, this is a point that Heike stressed already. Uh, the production of curry, cassava, starch, and rice um, has a significant environmental impact, uh, mainly caused by agricultural cultivation, but um, also processing uh, is, is relevant. This is what we have seen here, when it, uh, mainly when it comes to water consumption and um, starch processing. Um, yeah. We have the we, we saw the importance of different phases 
FarmGate and uh, market and place. That, that was what, what Heike uh, showed us. And um, when we look at these aggregated figures, we see that these losses have, an, if all these losses combined, really have a significant environmental impact. Um, to set this into perspective, um, the emissions of 2.3 million tons of CO2 equivalents, that is all the emissions of post-harvest losses combined of, of maize, and, in the cassava, maize and cassava value chains uh, due to post-harvest losses, um, would represent 3.3 of the total greenhouse gas emissions in Nigeria. Um, of course, there's a lot of data insecurity involved with the total amount of uh, post-harvest losses, also um, of the of the CO2 emissions along the processing chain. But this number, def so the, the the absolute number has to be interpreted with care. But this definitely indicates that this is really contributing to the um, environmental burden on on a country scale. 20% um, of the cultivated area is wasted. That is straightforward to understand if we have like around one uh, fifth to a quarter uh, flosses, then we also have the, like almost the same amount of area wasted. Um, water is, as we have no irrigation, not the absolute um, environmental hotspot here. But um, we also have to we, have, we set this number into perspective with 150,000 people could use this water that is wasted due to post harvest losses if we assume a 50 liter per person and day are needed to um, ensure their basic water supply. Also, this is not really something that where we have to to discuss the, the the absolute number, but more to to show the the, the relevance, the to, to set the the total amount of water that is lost to the environment a little bit into perspective. Uh, we all have an, we had have done a qualitative a qualitative assessment of impact on biodiversity, uh, which can all only strengthen our concerns about the environmental burden that post harvest losses. Um, represent to the to the environment. Um, final conclusion: data insecurity about food losses remains a problem. Um, but so we we have we have seen like that we have a very good indication that post harvest losses are not only a monetary uh, concern but also an environmental concern, um, and to get really precise numbers that can maybe used also for, for further assessments, maybe further investigation and validations um, should be should be performed. Yeah, that was it. Thanks a lot for your attention and I'm very much looking forward uh, to a discussion. Thank you very much, Heike Ostermann at GIZ and Daniel Thülmann at PE International for this very interesting presentation. Uh, really considerable losses along the value chains of maize and cassava in Nigeria. Um, substantial in financial terms, I think I calculated 1.2 billion euro per year and also in ecological terms. Um, lots of input for discussion. Uh, I would now like to invite those who have called in using their computers to raise their hand for any question or comment. Uh, maybe something that I missed, in this case I apologize, but uh, with regard to the environmental footprint for uh, gari production, did you also take into account that the people processing the gari may use uh, fuel wood uh, to roast the gari? Um, so that it's kind of a double impact, I would say, because first of all you have the, the energy, the emission of carbon dioxide, and then you have the uh, depletion of uh, of trees and uh, wood from the, the forest. Um, Daniel, uh, well, well, Robert, we we did uh, we did uh, a survey on the energy inputs uh, in general, but I would like Daniel to uh, Daniel, uh, um, can you hear us? Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I can okay. I can answer this uh, yeah, question. Okay. We were um, aware of this problem. Um, the problem is that it's very difficult to assess like how much deforestation uh, takes place due to the uh, consumption of firewood. So uh, we have not assessed this in this study. Um, the carbon dioxide that is emitted from the wood itself has been um, extracted from the atmosphere, so it's biogenic carbon, so that will is, so to say, uh, carbon neutral. It's extracted, released back to the atmosphere. Additional um, carbon would be released if there was uh, deforestation. Uh, we were aware that this might be um, an additional environmental burden, but because it's so difficult to assess and would have required like a really additional like study and data collection, it was out of the scope of this uh, study. But you're right that it, this might also be one more aspect that could be considered in further investi investigations. Uh, well, I have a few questions. Uh, well, I will start with a couple. Uh, first of all, I've seen that you have, uh, you have considered the ecological footprint of the use of uh, agrochemicals, such as fertilizers and pesticides. I was just wondering how common is in those far regions of Spain, of Nigeria, the use of fertilizers and pesticides in Sahara. The other question is related to starch. Uh, I would like to have a better understanding of the starch processing you have considered. Uh, personally, I'm not aware of large-scale starch processing in uh, those two states. I'm aware there are two large factories in Nigeria, but not there. So I think we are referring to microprocessors. And um, well, I would like to have just confirmation because in your sample you uh, you, inter you interact with ten staff okay. and uh, for the time being, I stop here. Um, um, to answer your first question on uh, pesticide and fertilizer use. Um, We've used the data we got from um, the, the, the surveys um, that were, were done as part, first part of the study. And indeed, uh, fertilizer use is not uh, very common in, in cassava cultivation. We have assumed um, also uh, after discussion with um, our colleague in Nigeria, Mr. Um, Oguntade, who uh, told us that often um, cassava and maize are um, cultivated in a mixed cropping system so that the fertilizer is applied to the maize um, and there is some nitrogen then still left in the soil that um, might then be uh, available for the cassava. So we have, to, we have assumed a mixed cropping system and have then um, allocated the fertilizer use to the um, to the cassava and maize cropping system accordingly to the final price of the product leaving the, the field. Um, as we have seen, the fertilizer use is also not like the very, very hot spot of the whole, um, of the whole chain, uh, supply chain. Um, but uh, yeah, also here, of course, there might be very large differences in different regions or um, depending on the on the size of the farm or the farmer. Um, concerning your second question, I'm not really sure if I have understood it clearly. Um, I think you were referring to the processing data or how we what we considered when we were um, modeling the processing. Um, also here, we used the, the data provided by Mr. Oruntade. Um, indeed, the, we have assumed like more a small smallholder processing. So it was not very, it's not very en intensive in terms of um, energy use or something. There is a lot of manual labor 
um, involved and manual labor we have, always enters the, the system like burden free so there's no environmental impact um, related to environmental labor but there is of course some um, some um, especially for starch processing there were some inputs in energy and mainly in water so water in starch processing is like one of the uh, inputs where we that we also see on the final result level uh, when we look at the water footprint do we have any other comments or queries from uh, those colleagues who have dialed in using their computers yes uh, i see irene kuman please irene Yes, thank you very much. Um, I want to ask Heike, um, right in the beginning of the presentation, um, I think I missed something because you, you went from the number of farmers and processes uh, that were part of the study, and then you went straight into the results. But can, can you explain a little bit more about the methodology you used to come to those very exact figures of, uh, you know, of losses you presented? Thank you. Yes, um, I, I can do, Irene. Um, as, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we used questionnaires and we used uh, uh, three different questionnaires for the farmers, for the marketers, and for the, for the processors. Uh, the, there are a lot of pages of the questionnaire. That's why I did not uh, uh, show them. I just uh, said the points which we where we collected the information. So now coming to the losses, that is, uh, that is an important question um, because uh, it was new for us and we, we, uh, we just tried to find out, do we do measurements? Uh, so do we measure, really measure the part which is lost? I mean, this, this cannot be done uh, within a study of a few weeks. If you really want to measure, I think, uh, you, you you may do it with a, a, a several year uh, a lasting uh, research project uh, to really uh, measure uh, those losses by balance or something like this. So what we did is an assessment. What means we asked the farmers, and the farmers were asked in 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 their traditional measures uh, uh, what they suppose is lost when they had. Uh, maybe a pickup full of cassava, uh, how much of this uh, pickup is lost due to um, to spoilage or uh, to, to, to spillage and so on. And they, they have different traditional measures, uh, which uh, I, I don't have it now, but it, it is in the study. Um, it is um, their boxes, traditional boxes. And so the farmers... Um, indicated the amount of uh, uh, of uh, um, harvested product which is lost uh, uh, in uh, referring to the total amount Although they have not been asked what is the percentage because they would not uh, answer this question but the the questions have been translated in a way that the people either showed by hand what they thought is lost which part is lost or they just measured is which uh, with Kogo, I, I, I don't know exactly the names now from the traditional measures. And then this was written down and, and found by all the farmers. Yes, thank you. Actually, I have two questions. I was wondering about the contribution to the carbon footprint for cassava. Uh, uh, of course, I'm a media background, so I'm not, uh, not such an expert on the field, but I always thought that cassava was very um, uh, low on in, uh, input intensity, uh, input, uh, low on inputs on the agricultural time. And you, 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 there's a lot of work in clearing the land, but afterwards the cassava really mines itself until harvesting. So, and then when you harvest it, you, you have to use manpower. So I'm surprised that the proportion of, of, uh, of the carbon footprint of, of cassava is so high because additionally it's contrasted with the high intensity uh, processing that you need. So first of all, I was wondering if you could have a comment on that. Um, number two, I was wondering if in general if you could comment anything on, on if anything in the study was surprising because I find you, you, ha you have a 
carbon footprint, for instance, of uh, 0 0.59 tons of carbon dioxide per ton of, um, of cassava. And is that high or low? Are, are, is like sugarcane, is that one ton per ton? Or, or do you know anything about the relative values uh, if, if these findings are, are low or high regarding other crops, for instance? Thank you. First, to the um, input, mit, um, input intensity on cassava. Um, as I said, we have, we have assumed a mixed cropping system. So there is a little bit of the fertilizer um, used for the maize is also attributed to cassava cultivation. Still, both uh, fertilizer use was not very extensive. So um, it, it's still valid that it's not very and very resource intensive cultivation system. Still, there are always um, some emissions occurring during agricultural activity. And the, um, the decisive factor is that due to the cultivation, to the nutrients you apply to the um, soil cultivation, you have um, these nitrogen emissions, these laughing gas emissions. And laughing gas is a very potential a greenhouse gas and so all agricultural activity is always to a certain extent causing additional global uh, additional um, greenhouse gas emissions compared to a, a natural system uh, so this is why we will always find um, like even if you have an if you have no fertilizer no pesticide use at all we will always find that um, you have some uh, emissions from agriculture um, and also the clearance for an example we have also accounted for that so there you have some um, emissions too some methane emissions when burning biomass this is also a potential a, 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 a very potent uh, greenhouse gas um, so so this is why um, surprising for me in the study where the absolute amounts like of all post harvest losses combined together um, if I mean even if it's if it's only like around three or four percent of total glow of the total greenhouse gases emitted by a country just because of the uh, cultivation and of the post harvest losses of the two main agricultural products um, that is even if there might be some mistakes, it really indicates that it's a, a, a relevant uh, problem on a, on a national scale. And I, I would have thought that when comparing it to national values, these figures will not show up that drastic anymore. Um, comparing the figures on product um, level, I have uh, tried to mention that in my presentation. We have benchmarked the values against um, existing data sets we have, for an example, uh, maize cultivation in the US or cassava cultivation in Thailand. Um, and the, as I said, the figures are lay, lay in range. I, I have not a very precise picture in my mind, but I think um, cassava cultivation in Thailand is maybe like around 15% lower than the cassava cultivation in Nigeria. Um, Main reason for that, as I said, is that the yields that are reported were reported in the service are very low. They are even lower than the, the values reported in FAO stat. So this is the reason why um, the natural the the emissions that occur anyway on the field uh, then cannot be distributed over a large yield. So that per kilogram of product you have more emissions attributed to one one kilogram. Um, but as I said, it's not like they are not completely out of range, but a, a little bit higher, same for, for maize, a little bit higher than you might uh, have it in um, systems where the yields are very uh, much larger. I think the, the, the yield in Thailand is like almost four times as high as in FAOs that reported uh, as the values that were reported now in the survey. So just to give the dim dimension here. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, Heike, I see your hand raised. Did you want to add to what Daniel said? Uh, well, the, uh, Daniel, at the end, he mentioned already what I wanted to say. Uh, the problem of the low productivity in Nigerian agriculture is, 
is at least as significant for our greenhouse gas emissions as a coast harbor flow. This is really a concern, and they need, need a lot of land to come uh, to a certain amount of harvest. Uh, uh, if I wanted to add as well uh, on the on the on the figures, um, I think in this study the figures which which we uh, uh, which we found out for the losses are more on the high side than on the low side. Uh, it, it was it was very hard, hard uh, uh, and difficult to assess uh, uh, on the figure, but we wanted to go down to the farmer to find it out. And uh, it was concerned that we attend figures up to 30%, but um, you cannot accumulate and sum up uh, those uh, uh, percentages which you have seen because they have not the same reference base. And um, I, I think uh, uh, what this study did, uh, uh, in any case, they show, uh, it showed the hotspots where we have uh, large amounts of losses and where we should uh, uh, look in detail and uh, 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 go on for some solutions. Concerning uh, the, 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 the total figures, I think um, I, um, I'm waiting for more studies to confirm it, but uh, it is still uh, a methodological challenge to, to really come exactly to, uh, to the amount of figures. So for this study, I think they are more on the high side than on the low side. Thank you, Heike. Do we have any more comments or questions from the colleagues who have used their computers to dial in? Uh, yes, Diego again. Uh, well, uh, when talking about the losses, uh, the definition is always very important. Uh, you know, there are uh, somehow contradictory definitions in this aspect. I've seen that you refer to the FAO definition. Uh, so, they refer to the decrease in edible food demand, etc., uh, etc. Et so, I just, I was just wondering how did you deal with the small uh, cassava root? Because you consider the small cassava root as a loss. Uh, according to my experience, when I carry out a senior exercise in Nigeria and Ghana, uh, actually, these small roots are not thrown away, but there is always an alternative use uh, of these roots, maybe sold at discounted price. So it's more a matter of economic loss than physical loss. So I wanted to understand how you dealt with these uh, uh, small roots. And very much easier. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Diego, if I understood you well, I did not understand uh, uh, everything from your question, but you asked it, uh, about the byproduct and the cassava value chain. Is that, is that right? No, I'm asking about the small group that you have uh, considered as a lot. So I was just wondering if well, you assume that these small groups are thrown away, yeah. or there is an alternative use, lower mm -hmm. value use in the value chain, in such a way, it's, it's more a matter of economic growth rather than physical growth. Yeah, this is right. The byproduct from cassava and the small cassava uh, uh, tubers are um, sun dried and fed to the livestock. Yeah. Mm. Or it was brought to the pig farmers, but uh, to a much lesser price uh, uh, than, um, than when it was intended for the market. So. Uh, we um, well, that is a de that is a question of the de definition of loss. So we said uh, this cassava is intended for um, for marketing and for human consumption or for a special value chain. So in this case, we um, we have seen the byproduct as as a loss because uh, it cannot be uh, valued. In the same way as it would have been if it is uh, a, a good, uh, a fully grown cassava, um, cassava um, tuber. Yeah, but actually it is not thrown away. It is uh, sun dried and it is, it is feed to the to the pigs, which we uh, actually which we mentioned in the study. Yeah, but we did not mention it in the in the summary of the percentages of losses which I uh, showed today. 
Thank you, Heike. I would now like to give the chance to those uh, users uh, who have dialed in using their telephones. Um, do we have uh, a, a couple of, of them. Do we have any questions or comments from them? Yes, uh, this is uh, Max Streit uh, speaking from uh, Swiss Development Corporation. I was just wondering, uh, as you guys were looking at the situation of uh, maize uh, post-harvest losses in uh, Nigeria, uh, can you say anything about whether uh, there are uh, existing or planned programs in uh, Nigeria to uh, reduce those losses? Um, okay, I try to answer. Uh, not, not immediately on this value chain, Max. Um, uh, we did uh, this study because we had uh, uh, good connections with Nigeria. And we have activities in Nigeria and we intend to, uh, uh, to uh, do something uh, which is in the very, very first step of preparation of a project. So I cannot uh, tell too much about it. Uh, it would probably not be maize and cassava. It would probably be rice. Uh, but um, what we intend to do, we have other programs of rural development in Nigeria and agriculture productivity and uh, our um, our goal is to mainstream the topic of post-harvest losses into existing rural development projects. We are not on the point or now that the people say, okay, we are going to, uh, tomorrow we will start to do that. But uh, um, we hope to bring the, the topic towards our project and toward, towards uh, the partners uh, to include uh, uh, it as a, as a real, as a transversal team in, uh, in mainstreamed in rural development project. And, but as I told you, there might be a project which, which deals with losses in the value chain, but this is in the very early stage. Thank you, Heike. Um, do we have any other question? I'm a little bit uh, conscious of the time. We've almost been uh, keeping Heike and Daniel busy for one hour now. I'm, I'm happy to continue if there are further questions. If that is not the case, uh, do you have any final words for us, Heike or Daniel? Uh, uh, thank you, Thomas. Um, uh, as you said at the beginning, I introduced the, the terms of reference of the study a year ago, and it took us a year to, uh, uh, to present the final product today. Um, um, I'm very interested to uh, keep on discussing about methodologies, uh, how to uh, um, evaluate losses in, in different commodities and in different agricultural products. There's not much, uh, um, there's not much uh, basis uh, for the moment, and um, we are looking forward. We are, uh, at the moment, we plan to do two other studies, one more in Nigeria on rice and one more in Kenya on potatoes. Uh, we learned about this study where to look at at the next time, where are maybe some some points which we uh, uh, which we, which were uh, very good, where are other points which we could uh, improve. So, and I am very glad to share uh, with you the results today and to get your responses on that. Thank you very much again, Heike. Um, I'm sure uh, the colleagues uh, would be looking forward to learning more about your other upcoming studies. And um, I think the, the platform is a, is a good place to, to continue the discussion, including on, on methodology uh, for evaluating such losses, uh, both in monetary terms as well as uh, ecologically. Um, I would like to thank you again, uh, Heike Ostermann of GIZ and Daniel Thülmann of PE International for today's virtual briefing on uh, losses in cassava and maize value chains in Nigeria and their ecological footprint. Um, I would also like to thank today's participants uh, for the uh, fruitful discussion. And finally, I'd like to hand over again to Heike uh, for some <laughs> very final words. I see that her hand is raised again. I could please the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. I just wanted to refer on the web page, on the your global donor platform web page, where we uh, 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 um, put uh, all our documents from the past. Uh, I I admit 20 years of uh, uh, post harvest uh, uh, loss management. Uh, uh, we we. Uh, 
put them in, in electronic form. So uh, if you are looking for more details for techniques and so on, please use uh, this web page on the Global Donor Platform. And I'm very glad to see, um, I'm very glad too that uh, the Swiss Agency for Development Cooperation also included their documents there. So I think it's uh, going to be a rich uh, base for uh, knowledge exchange and to look on, on more in detail on, uh, on post harvest management. Thank you, Heike, for that reference again to that depository of, of documentation on post harvest losses. Um, thanks, everyone, for the discussion. This virtual briefing will be online on our website, uh, where you can have a look at it again, look at the presentation for anything you may have missed. Please do share it with your colleagues and your institutions, and uh, please continue the discussion. Thank you very much. <laughs>